So this video presentation continues on from a series of videos I've done called Taking the Feed to the Switch. However, for AM2 and AM2S, this can be called the two-plate method. Key that you remember that, because under the pressure of an AM2 or an AM2S, you can find that the instructor would say to you it's done in the two-plate method, and you think, well, I've got no idea what's going on. It's where they take the feed to the switch. I've mimicked it in this installation. We're going to look at some of the terminations and some of the connections in order to energize this circuit. However, let's go back and think about why we'd want to take the feed to the switch itself. With the evolution of many downlighters and spotlights in domestic dwellings, you're trying to reduce the number of cables at the light point itself. If we look at this circuit here, we've only got one cable entering this lighting point. If we were to have multiple points from the same switch, we'd come off here with another cable to other lighting points, meaning that you only have a maximum of two cables at any one, say, downlighter in an installation, making it easier to terminate for the electrician. In order to do that, we need to take the feed to the switch. In this case, from the consumer unit, I've taken my permanent line, neutral and CPC down to my switch, and I'm gonna mimic a one-way switch to start with. And from the switch itself, we're taking a neutral, a switching line and CPC to the light fitting itself. We're gonna bring the camera in in a minute. I'm gonna look at the terminations, look at the overcurrent protection device in order to complete this circuit, a circuit which will be one-way with a two-plate method, in other words, taking the feed to the switch in order to reduce the number of cables at lighting points. Okay then, so let's have a look what's going on inside our consumer unit. We've got our RCD protection in the form of an RCCB because we know that all domestic lighting circuits need additional protection by an RCD rated at, and in this case, 30 milliamps or less. So that bit's correct. However, my students will notice that we've got the AC waveform and we're aware that we are not massive fans of AC RCDs. We've got our overcurrent protection device. It's B6. So it's rated at six amps and it is a type B in this case for the domestic dwelling which we're simulating. It could be a C, it could be a D, but we've got a type B here. So RCD protection because lighting circuits require it, rated at 30 milliamps, six amp type B circuit breaker. However, we could have used one of these, this being a miniature RCBO. So we've got both the overcurrent protection device of a circuit breaker and the additional protection offered by an RCD in one unit. Again, B6, type B6 amps, rated at 30 milliamps. So again, for additional protection rate at 30 milliamps or less. And this time we do like this one because this is an A-type device and we're looking to move towards more A-type devices, something we've talked about a lot in the classroom. If we leap forward in technology, we could have fitted one of these. Again, let's have a look at it. It looks like a miniature RCBO, which it is an RCBO because it's rated there at 30 milliamps. It's a B6, so it's also the circuit breaker is rated at six amps type B. But if you look there, we've got the letters that say AFDD. So this is an art fault detection device. The RCD itself within it is an A type, so we like that. So we could find, as we move forward, that technology requires us, through the regulations, to start fitting more and more art fault detection devices. So just to recap what we've got, RCD protection, overcurrent protection, rated at six amps. So in one of my previous presentations, I showed how to fit a circuit breaker of the star breaker designed for Crabtree into a consumer unit and how to connect the conductors in order to terminate a circuit. So I won't show that again. What I will show in the next part of the presentation is the connections when the feed has been taken to the switch in order to connect a one-way switch. So we're at the switch now. Subtle difference than all the other lighting circuits that we've actually wired at college is that we've now got two cables. We've got two twin and CPCs here. We've got the feed coming in. So we've got a line, a neutral, and a circuit protective conductor coming in, in this case from the consumer unit. And going out, we have a switching line, a CPC, and another neutral. I know at some colleges where there is, say, one cable coming down to a switch of twin and CPC, often it is the blue is a switching line conductor and is identified with brown sleeving. In this case, where the feed has been taken to the switch, doing the two plate method, both the blue conductors are actually neutrals. Let's look at terminating, first of all, the CPCs. So let's fold the other conductors out of the way. So let's get those out of the way. 
like so and we'll concentrate on connecting the CPC. So we've got an insulated box and an insulated switch so we don't need a CPC we need it if there was an exposed conductive part a metallic light switch etc however we're still going to need it as part of the circuit and further upstream so we're going to connect them in the back of the actual switch itself remember the rule for Gary is it's approximately about 70 mil longer than the box for all conductors so if I cut those off at that point just there and then we can over sleeve it so we've got to put our green and yellow sleeving on so I can measure the length approximately down to here if I fold it then in half and we can cut those two to exactly the same length so they can go on like so there's one and there's the other we're still going to double over our terminations so I'm still going to double them over to go into here so take our CPC I might just trim it back a little bit and I'm just going to double it over a technique we've seen many times on the channel before take the other one trim it back and double it over like so take my screwdriver and I will connect those in the back of the box So let's hope they go in. Oh, it's an easy first time on camera, like that. Just push that one in and hold it. We've got our CPCs terminated into the back of the box. Just dress those out of the way, like so. And we're ready now to look at the next one. Let's do the neutrals next. So let's take those two neutrals down to here. Again, approximately 70 mil longer than the box, like so. And this time we're gonna use our Vargo. Um, this is a three conductor connector. We could have had a two conductor connector. I just couldn't find one for the video. So we've got a three conductor connector here. And on the side of it, as shown in previous videos, you can see that you've got to strip back to 11 mil the insulation off the conductors themselves. So we'll do that next. So approximately 11 mil. Take my knife. Okay, so pop that one off. Same on the next one to it. So taking off approximately 11 mil. Press quite firmly with your knife. And we go. And hopefully that will pull away. Yeah, okay. So taking our Vargo connector, lift up the levers, insert our conductors in like so. And then just there we go so they're now connected so we've got those two conductors connected could have had a two we've got a three conductor connector there for our neutrals and again they're going to need to be placed inside the box out of the way so let's just dress those around like so and next we'll be ready for the lines take our line conductors again approximately 70 mil longer than the box cut those off i'm going to take our knife going to double these over as well so we're going to double these over it's reasonably firm with a knife. Do them approximately the same length. Like so. Okay. Double these over. Taking slightly less than half. Folding it against itself. Squeezing up the gap. Taking slightly less than half. Folding it over. Squeezing it up against itself. Get rid of that gap. So I've got two doubled over terminations like so ready to go into the actual switch itself. The switch I'm going to use is a one-way switch, common and L1. doesn't really matter which way around they go, but I will put the incoming line conductor in common and the switching line in L1. So take the line conductor and here we go like so. Just push it back into place. So as I'm holding it there, I'm going to hold it in place as I tighten it up. so and then take my switching line and go into L1 again hold it into place as you tighten it up like so so there we have the connections okay let's just take a little bit of PVC insulation out of the way so let's have a look then so we've got a permanent line coming down into common we've got a switching line going back out to our light fitting we've got our two neutrals connected together in a Vargo connector block and our CPCs are secured in the back of the box because it's a fully insulated box and switch 
Remember this method called taking the feed to the switch can often be called the two plate method. Really key that we remember that. So let's have a look at the connections in the actual ceiling rose itself. In this case, a batten lamp holder. I've used a conventional three plate one. So we've got the looping terminal in the center, which is no longer needed. We've got the switching line coming from the switch, the neutral coming from the switch, and the CPC also coming from the switch. So this cable here brought in the switching line, neutral and CPC, and is connected neutral across the lamp, switching line across the lamp, and the CPC secured in the back of the actual fit in itself. And we can see how this two plate method reduces the number of cables here at the lighting point. Very important when we're fitting down lighters, LED spotlights, etc., that we reduce the number of cables. And by using the two plate method, it means we've cut down the number of conductors. If we want another light to come on at the same time, the neutral, the switching line and CPC would loop round to the next light, to the next light, to the next light, meaning that we get a maximum of two cables per down lighter. So hopefully this added to the series of videos called taking the supply or taking the feed to the switch that I've made for the channel already when we're looking at now calling it the two plate method. So just to go back through what we did, the feed came from the consume unit, but it could come from another room within the dwelling and that supply went straight to our switch. From the switch, we went up in this case just to one lighting point. Often it's to many down lighters. The advantage being we reduce the number of cables at the lighting point. We make our connections for the neutrals, the line, switching line and CPCs all within our switch itself. This was the one way method. We can extend it to two way and we can extend it to two way and intermediate. And I may do that in future video presentations along with testing this circuit. But for the time being, I hope this video has been some help.